Hello everyone, Rizaya here. Some of you had taken notice of my nickname in the upper left corner in one of my previous videos and inquired about it in-game. So rather than explain this a bajillion times to a bajillion different people, I'm instead going to make a tutorial about it. One of my favorite parts about Vanilla is that despite the game being over a decade old, there are still innovative concepts and varying opinions on optimal performance put forth by the community. Back at, like, level 35 or so, I acquired this here Ravager. I borrowed some gold from a friend to put Crusader on it, and after discovering just how powerful it is, I've been using it ever since. Folks, especially guildies, have taken to calling me the Ravager, hence the nickname. Why the hell would you want a Ravager, you may ask? Well, you'll see it in action very shortly, but if I had to present you with another reason, it would be to round out the weakness and impracticality of regular Hunter AoE. Multi-Shot only hits three targets, so although it's an awesome ability, it's just not practical for huge pulls. Volley eats up a ton of mana, is on a one minute cooldown, can only be used from range, and does not improve with your attack power. The drawback of Explosive Trap is that it must be used in melee. The Ravager is a devastating melee weapon that could, at the very least, allow you to farm low-level stuff with massive and fun pulls. I'm not sure exactly how the Ravager would function on other servers, or on an official Blizzard Legacy server, but here on Kurnos 2, it has some interesting behavior that makes it more powerful than I would guess it should be. Regardless of whether or not this is intended, I've taken an extreme liking to the weapon, so I'll tell you all that I know about it, as it behaves on Kurnos 2. You'll see more of the Ravager throughout my dungeon series. Too much of it, in fact, but I was still learning technique and when to take it out and when to leave it away. It's capable of doing some serious bullshit, but I'll let you see that for yourself throughout this tutorial. First, let's talk specialization and keybinds. You're going to need two keybinds, one for your normal weapon set and one for your Ravager. Since I'm using two two-handed weapons, I simply have my weapons dragged onto my bar, but a good add-on for swapping sets is Outfitter. As for specialization, the key talents that improve the Ravager in particular are in survival. Most notable of them are Savage Strikes and Clever Traps, which are easy to access and improve your Raptor Strike damage as well as your Explosive Trap damage. Obviously, this is wonderful for sustained melee DPS. Killer Instinct is also nice, since it improves your critical strike chance with all attacks, not just ranged, like the Marksman Lethal Shots talent. Lightning Reflexes is also cool, but you'd need a ton of agility to make it really viable. I'll link to my specialization in the description and detail some things about it a little later in this video. It's a rating specialization compatible with the Ravager. Now then, let's begin with some behavioral rules for the Ravager. These rules are useful to know if you want to know how the Ravager's use will affect you in combat. First of all, you cannot click off Bladestorm. Swapping weapons will enable you to move again, but you cannot re-equip your Ravager until the Bladestorm you broke would have ended normally. Secondly, Bladestorm ticks twice. Feel free to swap weapons after the second tick goes out if you want to relocate. This is safe. Furthermore, if you get two procs atop each other, the second blade storm will end when the first one would have ended. Try not to get two procs on top of each other for this reason. Finally, blade storm ticks interrupt feign death. Break blade storm if you have to stay down in feign death, and make sure that if you drop an explosive trap via feign death mid blade storm, you must do so very quickly before or after ticks. Remember that you will dump the massive area effect threat you'll generate if you do this after the second tick goes out. But how do you actually deal damage with this weapon, given these behaviors to bear in mind? Well, first and foremost, you have to remember that the Ravager is an RNG weapon. RNG stands for Random Number Generator, which is the AI used to determine slash roles in-game, weapon procs, and other things that occur by chance. To account for this, if you do not get a proc, complement your melee attacks with Feign Death plus Explosive Trap, or some Engineering Bombs. There are numerous sources of alternatives. For instance, Crystal Charges gained by combining red and yellow power crystals at the Northern Crystal Pylon in Ungoro Crater are the most potent dynamite-type explosives in the game and do not require engineering to use. Next, it's important to know that Bladestorm does not interrupt any action other than moving. You can channel a Goblin Dragon Gun, 
Toss Bombs, Feign Death and Explosive Trap, Raptor Strike, Auto Attack, anything you want while Bladestorming. You can even shoot an enemy at range while Bladestorming another in melee. You just can't move. You're rooted in place. Given that you can dodge and parry while Bladestorming, and that the Ravager is capable of pulling an awful lot of threat, keep Aspect of the Monkey up while you use it, and feel free to pop deterrence if need be. Also, due to rooting you in place, Bladestorm will make you immune to knockbacks. This is particularly useful for the Lava Surgers in Molten Core. Moving on, Blade Storms can be interrupted by stuns, fears, polymorphs, and incapacitates, so it has limited use in PvP, although it is fun to chop up a warrior in melee if you have no other choice. It cannot be interrupted with stuff like Counterspell or Kick, and being disarmed won't interrupt your Blade Storm, but your Blade Storm's damage will be unarmed damage instead. So, now that you know the theory behind it, let's talk actual damage dealing and rotation. As a hybrid melee ranged specialization, you're free to move in and out of melee where convenient. However, don't think that means your melee and ranged damage are equal. Only head into smack stuff if you have a lot of targets to bladestorm. Three or higher is okay, but the more targets, the better. Commit to ranged damage only if you have three or less targets. Multi-shot is obviously the deciding factor here, and reliable procs at three targets can mean the difference between better DPS or worse DPS. You should become accustomed to swapping weapons under these conditions. Hit your ranged stats stick hotkey if you ever step away from melee or need to break Bladestorm for some reason. Retrieve your Ravager if you plan on staying in melee for more than a split second. I initiate by hitting a priority target with an aim shot or multiple insignificant enemies with a multi-shot before running in with Aspect of the Cheetah. I toggle it off before I get too close, jumping to keep my speed, and then enable Aspect of the Monkey. Before you get a proc, spam rank 1 Wing Clip, preferably on a different target every time, and use Raptor Strike and Mongoose Bite when they're available. This should increase your chances of scoring a proc. If possible, stand behind your enemies so you hit more often. Enemy NPCs cannot parry you from behind. After you get a proc, stop spamming your melee abilities. Only use auto attack and raptor strike since it occurs on an auto attack. You don't want a second bladestorm proc while you're already bladestorming, since the second proc will simply be cancelled when the first one ends. Use your explosive trap and bombs for burst damage during your bladestorm, but consider this of relatively low importance. If you don't get a proc at all, then explosive trap and bombs are a high priority. Remember that Feign Death will completely dump your aggro. If you wish to use your Explosive Trap, you must keep your pet or whatever allies are with you alive so they can take the aggro, if only for a second, else your enemies will simply evade and reset. If you're farming on your own, send your pet in ahead of you to make sure that all mobs are engaged with a secondary target before you go ahead and engage yourself. You can maintain an advantage by splitting hit points with your pet, allow all enemies to continue attacking your pet while you strike a single target with repeated wing clips. And when your Bladestorm procs, you'll take aggro off your enemies when it's far too late for them. Ranged damage rotation remains the same with this specialization, and speaking of which, I ought to go into detail about that right now. I and a friend of mine were discussing Ravager viability, and at some point during the conversation I worked up the specialization linked in the description, 73113. I'll explore other specializations for hunters that I prefer for one reason or another in the future. For now, let's stay focused on this one particular specialization. The first five points in Beast Mastery give you that sweet quick shots talent, which is awesome for ranged damage per second. The other two points go into improved revive pet, because it's pretty convenient, especially when your pet has no other talents beefing it up, that could help it to survive, so you know, it dies like any normal pet would. In the Marksman Tree is a standard build with Efficiency, Lethal Shots, Aimed Shot, Hawk Eye, Mortal Shots, Barrage, Ranged Weapon Specialization, and True Shot Aura. The two points a lot of people have asked me about are the points in Improved Arcane Shot. Why get Improved Arcane Shot? You could improve your Hunter's Mark a little, or add a rare stun to your Concussive Shot. My reason for this preference is that although Arcane Shot is very rarely used for damage, it is an incredible utility shot. You can knock an enemy player off a flag in a battleground and recover to use aim shot sooner. It makes kiting easier, you can tag enemies in the dungeon with such a weak shot that a simple battle shot from your tank will pull aggro. 
I use it quite a lot for this purpose, so I enjoy the benefit of that talent. But I digress. The survival talents in this specialization are Monster Slaying and Humanoid Slaying, Savage Strikes, two points in Improved Wing Clip, Clever Traps, and Deterrence. Obviously, Savage Strikes and Clever Traps benefit your Ravager build, but Clever Traps is nice to have for crowd control, and Deterrence will help you survive if you happen to pull a crapload of aggro with your AoE damage in a dungeon. Humanoid Slaying and Monster Slaying improve overall damage and critical strike damage against their respective targets, and who doesn't love more damage? This build offers quite a lot of ranged damage while also enabling you to wield your Ravager. In addition, True Shot Aura gives you melee attack power as well as ranged attack power, so it's not like it's a purely ranged talent. Of course, these points are laid out the way I desire them. If you wish, I encourage you to adjust the build however you believe it would suit you best. The last thing I want to suggest to you is that you test your limits. See how many enemies you can pull without dying. Check out how much burst AoE damage you can dish out all at once. The only way you ever learn something and become better at the game is to innovate yourself. Be creative, try something new. You never know what you might discover. If you're level 60 and you're looking to give your Ravager a trial run, Numerigan for the Alliance and Razorfin Downs for the Horde are excellent instances to practice in. The most important habit to develop for this build, I'd say, is remembering to swap your weapons accordingly, so make sure you're conscious of that. And learn to move quickly and efficiently in and out of melee. Maybe get a multi-shot off when you step out for a second or something. Know your dead zone well so you don't miss out on DPS. If you prefer to hone your skills in a dungeon closer to level cap, Sunken Temple and Blackrock Depths are great dungeons to run with a Ravager build. I have tanked Sunken Temple from the first pull to the final boss with a Ravager compatible build on a Hunter. Raptor does not and has never had Growl. I did it with dodge and AoE damage. Side note, if anyone has any idea what male gear would be awesome for hunter tanking, I'm looking to explore the possibilities, so hit me up with some ideas, guys. We'll come up with something cool. Anyway, bearing all of this in mind, it's my sincerest hope that you enjoy your new Ravager, if you decide to go and get one. Remember that if you have any comments or questions, simply leave them below and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching, everyone, and happy hunting!